Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tristan Everett from Mark and I. Welcome to the Q1 Financial 22 uh, webinar for Way to That ASX code W2V. Uh, with me from live from Tel Aviv, I have CEO Amos Samantov. Um, and Amos will talk through a, a short presentation which has been put on the ASX uh, just prior to this webinar as well. And we are also taking uh, Q&A this afternoon. Uh, you'll find at the bottom of your screens there a Q&A uh, function. So by all means, pop them in there. I'll keep an eye on them as they come through. We've got a little bit of time for questions and uh, we'll endeavor to get through as many of them as we can. Amos, over to you. I'll get you to share your screen and uh, talk through everybody through the slides. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome on board. Um, so I will go to the slides uh, uh, to the uh, Q1 results. Um, so um, in terms of uh, uh, partnerships, so uh, we have uh, the same numbers more or less that we had like last quarter. So about uh, 19 uh, technology partners. Um, Main development that we had last quarter is uh, is with Zoho. We launched uh, um, the first time uh, an integration with Zoho. It's the first time for Zoho uh, promoting uh, way to that in their clients. We are talking about uh, 6,000 clients in Europe. So uh, the feedback is nice so far. So we are trying now, we are approaching those clients and see how we can uh, starting uh, signing them as a new clients for SMB. Um, main activity for a uh, partnership was Zoho in the last quarter. Uh, we have uh, some nice growth in the SMB. So uh, additional 50 clients on top of the 700 we had. Uh, we signed new 10 enterprise clients, large one, and the largest one is Playmobil, uh, the largest, uh, one of the largest toy manufacturers in the world. Uh, this was like a game changer uh, for, uh, for us uh, in that field, on that vertical. Uh, it's the first time that we are working closely with a toy manufacturer. Uh, so there are other in the pipeline uh, on the same vertical. Playmobil is one of them. Uh, customer retention, we are still on 97%. Um, so uh, it looks like a, a very promising in terms of uh, uh, that number. Um, heading to the financials, so the key numbers, uh, transaction volume uh, for last quarter uh, was Q1 was about 2 million, uh, 200, uh, uh, and 3 a million transaction. It's a 62 growth per uh, compared to the last quarter in uh, 2021. So it's a nice growth. Uh, cash received. Uh, from last quarter, we have a growth of 45% to 254K. Uh, cash balance, we have a $2.7 million. And if we will increase, and this is one of the main planning that we have, revenue, uh, this will give us a, a nice run rate uh, for the next uh, 12 months or so. Um, uh, total enterprise clients, uh, we have about 210. It's a growth of 40% compared to uh, last year, um, same quarter. And uh, SMB uh, compared to last quarter, as I said, we have about 750 altogether, 7% um, growth. Um, this is the building blocks of our business. So we see the growth on every element. SMB, we have a growth uh, with small, medium, mainly with technology partners like Zero. Sedge, Zo, and others. Um, enterprise also, we are sh showing some nice growth there compared to last year, uh, even that uh, we are on the pandemic, uh, but we still, we, we see now the rebound and we are seeing that uh, there is uh, more appetite uh, from companies uh, uh, to get aligned with our technology and uh, our solution. Um, and, and we have also uh, growth in uh, transaction volume. So it's 60% more than uh, uh, last year and 45% uh, quarter over quarter. So uh, indication are nice. 
in terms of the cash flow, so we go to the bottom line, uh, net cash use operating activities about $1.3 um, uh, million dollars uh, and cash balance it's about uh, 2.6. Uh, we are on the same run rate more or less on uh, uh, last quarter. Um, we hope to see some uh, changes for, um, or for next quarter, uh, a reduce of burn rate uh, because main, of, main development that we have done for the smart spending card uh, was in the last um, uh, six to uh, 12 months. So we reduce uh, a bit our uh, expenses around that. Uh, we'll see some uh, more investment. Uh, we put more resources in the marketing and sales, mainly for the smart spending cards for the next quarter. Uh, this is our uh, growth engine for uh, uh, the next uh, the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, product innovation. So we launch. Uh, we had a soft launch um, in Australia in ASX uh, a few weeks ago. A partnership with Mastercard and uh, Raise Bank. Uh, first in the world with vendor that are providing uh, a debit card, a smart spending card. Well, this VAT engine was VRD reclaim refund, actually cash back uh, to your uh, wallet or to the credit card or debit card itself. Uh, no one is doing that in the market today. We are the first and only vendor are doing that. End to end process from uh, uh, first step that you are as an employee uh, starting generating uh, invoices. So any invoice that you're having, potentially uh, we can reclaim the VAT for your employer, for the companies itself. And then the cash uh, goes back uh, to the ledger, to the virtual uh, voter automatically. No one is doing that today uh, in the market. It's a revolutionary. Therefore, we got uh, the attention for MasterCard uh, uh, to have this partnership. Um, so uh, what we are doing with that card, uh, we have like a, four three elements first subscriptions subscriptions fees uh so we we'll control the entire subscriptions fees uh, for businesses um uh, SaaS licenses companies are paying for uh, um, amazon are paying for google paying for jira paying for uh, uh, uh linkedin or or others um the pain point here is that any expense that companies are having is very complicated to control it on a monthly basis. Uh, every month is different number because the licenses, people are, are, are leaving the company and it's uh, very complicated to control it. Sometimes you are paying more than expected. So we are putting the ruling agent with a fixed budget uh, for each subscription fees. If uh, the vendor would like to charge the employee more than expected, a red flag will come automatically to company and then they can start a conversation with the vendor. Um, today, the way it works, uh, they are charging you, you as, a, as a company and then you need to chase them and to ask some questions why uh, the, the numbers is different that uh, was planned. So um, with our solution, everything goes online. And most importantly, uh, once you do that, once the, uh, the company does the, the transaction, uh, we will provide the invoice uh, online and we do the match, the online matching between the transaction and the invoice itself. Uh, invoice, it's a crucial for the accounting uh, departments and very important for the VAT reclaim. So we do the online matching between the, uh, the two. And once we see that is 100% match, uh, we go and we, we reclaim the VAT or we prepare a report, a monthly report for your local VAT for your subscriptions fees. Account payable, you can pay for by virtual wallet. You can pay to your suppliers if it's um, whatever supplier you have uh, with that card. Again, once you have the invoice and you have the transaction, we do the match and the VAT, it's part of that. Uh, travel expenses, uh, and you know, it's, it's uh, now uh, empl employers are, would like to empower employees. So uh, providing them a card, a, a corporate card. Uh, so uh, the idea is to provide our debit card uh, with a ruling engine that you can control any expense to, to employees. And then once we have uh, the receipts, 
and we have the transaction itself, uh, we go and we reclaim the VAT four in one in 40 different countries automatically. The same for account payable and subscription in 40 different countries automatically. And then we got, uh, we got the cash back to your wallet or to the company's wallet automatically. And the VAT reclaim as mentioned is part of the solution. Um, uh, so these are the main elements or the main solution in that card. So we are providing better control, compliance. It's an issue for the VAT. So we are really supporting that better visibility and saving. Um, so what we have done uh, with that product, uh, we, um, we, we did some survey with our clients. So we have already some commitments. Uh, clients already signed as a design partner. Uh, for that car, it's uh, so it's very promising, uh, mainly in Europe. Um, so the idea is to have a growth sales to European hub. Uh, our headquarters in London will manage that uh, with the team that we are having there. Uh, first phase will be uh, small medium businesses, mainly on the mid tier uh, companies in a size of uh, uh, 200 employees up to 2,000 employees around that. So uh, this is the target market. Um, and for sure, we'll do more uh, partnership and uh, integration with uh, accounting uh, software like uh, SAP and others uh, to provide all the data automatically back to, your, to the ERP uh, systems. So this is part of the end-to-end -end solutions once we have uh, the entire data, the invoice itself and the transaction. So, uh, um, so, and, and, um, and, and the idea is once we have that, so um, um, also we, uh, part of our uh, announcement that we have done in, uh, in, um, in the prospectus, we say that we're going to have uh, uh, inorganic growth. So we are looking to expand our businesses in Europe by acquiring companies. So this is also something, uh, a part of our strategy, uh, short term, by the way, um, uh, so we have two main vehicles now running on top of the VAT that we have done the bread and butter in the last three years. We have the uh, smart spending card with uh, MasterCard and we have the inorganic growth uh, m &A approach. So going back to the spending card, so the main building blocks we have, uh, we will uh, launch a, a, a mobile app, iOS and Android. Um, Receipts can arrive by email or can uh, comes automatically with our app or with employees. Once they click on the camera, the receipt goes automatically to the ruling engine. Ruling engine, we can define any expense by amount, by date, by type of expense. Um, and uh, then uh, we can, uh, in that, uh, we can pay for subscriptions as they mentioned. Uh, the advantages that we have in the subscription fees and the way that we are controlling and paying that. Travel expenses uh, can be local uh, travel expenses or, or a foreign one. So it can be a, a both. Uh, so we are doing that for local. We can preparing also the local VAT or GST report for uh, companies. And then you have the account payable. Uh, once we got the invoice, we do the VAT compliance. So we look on any invoice to see that it's under the compliance on each country. And then we go and uh, we reclaim the VAT in 40 different countries, or we do a local report for uh, your local uh, tax authorities. And then the cashback uh, arrives back to your ledger, to the virtual wallet automatically. So this is the only solution in the world that are having cashback by VAT to the uh, debit card. No one is doing that today. So um, companies can see the ROI immediately. Financial department is not just for spending, also they can get cash. And through this cash, they can uh, spend uh, their expenses. Um, so the outlook, we continue growth in revenue in the next uh, 12 months. Um, so, and we increase the business uh, to national and domestic. Uh, Post-COVID, we see the sentiment going uh, very positively. Uh, uh, we see the rebound in the market. As said uh, last time, it's going to be very hot summer uh, for the tourism industry. 
and I think the business travelers are followers is part of that. So whatever we built in the last uh, 24 months in the COVID time, and we did the, the shift uh, concentrating more on local VAT and uh, AP, uh, bear in mind 90% of our revenue in 2019 was uh, travel expenses and 90% of our revenue in 2021 was local VAT for local traveler, a traveler traveling in their own countries and they have their own expenses and AP. So that we did this shift. So whatever now we have a growth on um, uh, based on the, uh, if the COVID will be behind us, uh, we'll have a growth in the travel industry. Uh, we see significant growth in our uh, businesses as well. So this is part of the uh, strategy that we are having. Um, so we put a lot of uh, uh, efforts on the uh, complementary product for VAT G GST and also automated platform uh, for, for, uh, for tax authorities and also for partnership. Um, and, uh, and we're going to have the inorganic growth as mentioned. I hope uh, we, we will announce some uh, news around that uh, in the next few weeks. Yeah, so this is my part. Uh, it looks, uh, this quarter is looks uh, um, uh, quite, uh, quite uh, promising uh, in terms of uh, the business growth. Um, and and um, we hope uh, the really, for all of us, pandemic will be behind us. Then we see numbers are growing dramatically. I'm all, all the time saying if uh, we've been in a situation, the pandemic was off table, way to that the growth uh will uh, be an, an, uh, uh, three times or four times uh, compared to, to this what, what we are having now. So um, uh, it's a really really uh, an issue uh, but we see the rebound. Uh, we see that in, in that circumstances we are still growing. Uh, um, we did like a, a two times from uh, uh, 2020 to 21 and the idea is to keep uh, the same level in 2022. Uh, but we need to see that really uh, the pandemic is behind us. Therefore, we came with a debit card that can give us uh, more business opportunities. Uh, the business model is different. Uh, it's a SaaS model, so we can have cash in on monthly basis for every new contract that we are signing. We are very happy for what we are seeing so far uh, from the business perspectives that we are having with the debit card with uh, business partners that we sign already, clients. Uh, some, uh, some of them are uh, mid-size uh, with a few hundred, some of them with a few thousand, already committed to some nice number of cards. Um, and, and therefore we are seeing that this really can be uh, a growth engine for us um, in the next years to come. Thank you. Questions? Well, thank, thanks very much for that uh, in, introduction. Um, we do have a lot of questions in. So there are, there are quite a few questions on how the, uh, the smart card works. I think Amos gave a pretty good overview of that on the third last slide there. So I, I might hold off on those ones for now. But Amos, um, there's a couple around rollout of smart card. Uh, you've talked about 150 companies initially and 5,000 cards, and you just alluded to, to, to that before. Can you give uh, viewers an overview of the plan for rollout of uh, the smart card? Because it is a massive, massive um, opportunity, but um, you'll probably want to be uh, taking it in bite-sized chunks, I would think. Yeah. So um, we received uh, a license uh, to launch our product in three main territories. Uh, one is in the UK. Um, uh, second is, is in Europe, entire Europe, European countries, and, and Australia. So we've been decided to start first with the UK market. The idea we do a soft launch. Uh, actually, we already started to have design partners. So we signed some clients already, um, and we see the appetite from their side. Um, and the commitment that we are having a few hundred cards, and this is just to start with. Um, the idea uh, on this year, it's like we are calling like a pilot. And for the pilot, 
Uh, we very much would like to be to see that we have 100, 150 uh, new clients using the card, happy from the performance that they are getting, happy from the services they are getting, getting cash back to their uh, ledger, and early next and early next year uh, to start having a full roll up uh, uh, simultaneously, not just in the UK, in Europe and in Australia as well, and have a dedicated sales team for that. Uh, and, and I think if we will have more resources in terms of sales, we will have the revenue uh, to, support, uh, to support the growth of um, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this project. I've got a related question, I think, and it goes to the cash flow uh, slide that you showed previously. Uh, advertising and marketing for the quarter is, uh, has increased by 42%. Can you share the reasons uh, for that? Yeah, marketing, uh, um, we have uh, hired uh, um, and we put some efforts around that mainly for the spending card to be prepared to, to launch it. Uh, most of the resources now in terms of marketing uh, goes, uh, goes to the spending card on top of the uh, bread and butter VAT that we are having. So therefore we see some increase there. And uh, another one that they're up for on the, uh, also on cash flow, if we, if we cover off a few of those, uh, the R&D um, is uh, slowly increasing as well. And um, you talked about um, complementary products uh, coming up. Are you able to give us an overview of how that product development is going? Uh, what's in store, general costs, et cetera? Yeah, let's go one by one. You know, R&D uh, is growing because uh, we put an efforts on the smart card. Uh, and uh, this is a, a, a normal approach for startup company. We put a lot of efforts around that. Um, um, and uh, uh, in, what was the second question? Uh, in terms of the complementary products that are over the horizon. Complementary product, we are talking, uh, complementary product, we are talking about the small card. So this is, this is the product. Righty. So this is their product, their product. And um, a couple of questions around the patents and the AI. So can you give us an overview of the moat that is around the technology, how hard it is to replicate and um, the uh, and any other patents that you've got in play? So we have three patents and also three pat uh, registered patents in the US. So we are about to launch another three in the process, mainly in AI and uh, computer vision. Um, bear in mind that a uh, co-founder of mine, uh, Roy Shikrut, is a PhD for MIT Boston. He leads all this activity. Uh, one of the best guys in the world in that area. So we put a lot of efforts and IP uh, around that. Um, patents is around uh, capturing invoices uh, by images uh, on the VAT processes. So um, the uniqueness is between uh, the capturing the invoice, uh, the wave of the algorithmics uh, are, are uh, supporting that. Um, there is, by the way, a dedicated team of four guys in uh, Tel Aviv are, are day and night are working on, on, on that approach. And we see also uh, um, the obstacle that we are generating for uh, our competitors uh, uh, with that. Um, I think if a company would like to uh, build from scratch a business like that, uh, they need to uh, go uh, or look on to see how they are doing that to, through our patents. Um, and, and I think the uniqueness from our side is there, uh, really can protect us for uh, many years to come on the process of uh, VAT and computer vision and AI. So we are not, by the way, we are not seeing other vendors in the world are doing that by the way we do that. Uh, there are different ways doing that, but if someone would like to do it by our way, that is very scalable one, um, needs to go through our patents. So um, this, is, uh, this is one of the assets that we are having. Uh, as I said, we have three with 32 claims each. 
and we're going to have another three in the next 24 months that are in the process. Thank you. You, uh, you mentioned uh, that some of the revenue streams that would be coming from the, uh, the smart card. How does, if we look at the whole business model now and, the, uh, and what you're doing with enterprise cast customers and also through partnerships into the SMB market, how does the launch of the smart card change the, or evolve the business model? The, let's concentrate uh, for the business model of the smart card. Um, before the smart card, our business model was uh, contingent based. That means uh, we are reclaiming VAT, whatever cash we are providing to our clients, we get our fees uh, between 20, 25%. If it's a large client, many AP can, give, can be lower. Uh, with the smart card, we have decided to change it and we like to have a cash flow from day one. Uh, an idea is to come out and the pricing structure we build is a SaaS model. So we are charging per card per month and we are charging for licenses for the financial department to control the entire process via a platform. So there are two uh, vehicles here. Uh, the license fee, uh, a monthly one, uh, SaaS for a uh, financial department and uh, use of cards. Um, and per employee or, or uh, yeah, per employee or, or per company. So normally um, a company with a size of, uh, I would say 1000 can have uh, hundreds or 100 or around that cards. A uh, company with uh, 50 employees can have like five cards. So the ratio it's about one, 10% or few percent around that. Um, and the fees, it's, uh, it's about like a, a $10, 10 pounds around that is the pricing structure that we are having uh, for the companies uh, uh, per card. Um, I all the time saying it's not about uh, the cost, it's about what you are providing, the solution that you are providing to your clients. I think we are providing a substantial and a unique solution for our clients in terms of the pain points that they're having now. No one is the market doing that uh, by one packet. The subscriptions fees, account pay bill, travel expenses in one card and cash back with the VAT. And, and we see the appetite, they're happy to pay. And they see the ROI immediately because if they pay uh, a monthly fee and they get cash back from the VAT, so uh, the ROI can be in, in two, three, uh, two to three months time. I've got a couple of questions around the enterprise uh, market. Are you able to give us an overview of what's the general timeline for bringing uh, a new enterprise client on? I think you're up to 210 now of these multinational uh, companies. And uh, what's, the, what's the, uh, the runway, I suppose, for bringing them on board? So um, in the COVID time, um, having an enterprise client, when we're talking enterprise client, it's a client with the size of uh, 10 to 30,000 employees and up around that uh, can take uh, from uh, first meeting or first interaction till closing uh, can take six months uh, easily. Uh, post COVID or pre COVID, uh, it was about three months or four months. So it's about the appetite and how the priority is there because if they are not traveling, it's not on the top priority uh, to sign contracts. But now we are seeing the rebound, they're seeing more appetites for companies uh, to look at it, mainly on the compliance side. So uh, this also providing us some nice opportunities around that. Local VAT, as mentioned, the shift that we have done on AP, also pushing uh, uh, the growth of, uh, of uh, that solution. Uh, so uh, yeah, so uh, we uh, uh, enterprise, once we are signing the contract, once we have signed the contract, uh, we can take us around three to four, about three months to have them uh, on, uh, on board uh, and to finalize the process. That means, that means that depends of which ERP they are using. If they have already like, you know, using like SAP and we have already SAP or concurrent, it should be like, could be like uh, one month. But if it's like a new system, uh, this can take up to three months uh, to have them on board and thereafter uh, it runs for years, the retention in 
So um, the stickiness is there. With the S with your partnerships into the SMB uh, market, what are the challenges you're finding um, with the partners? How do you overcome them? Partners, um, SMB, um, because you know COVID is it's an issue. Uh, we need to see that uh, um, those companies are starting uh, their uh, uh, travels uh, in, in, in different countries. Uh, and once we see that, I think we'll have uh, one more clients because the appetite will be there and we see more attention for them uh, looking for a solution of the VAT reclaim. So we can grow from uh, easily on a quarterly basis, not by uh, uh, 50 or it could be like hundreds. Um, and also the revenue, because revenue that we are having now uh, from uh, that segment for the SMB is very limited, uh, mainly because we don't see a lot of um, uh, uh, travel. Uh, people are not traveling much as expected uh, because it's COVID. Um, small companies in their local countries it's a um, very low volume. And we hope once we will uh, cross this uh, pandemic, we see the growth because the platform is ready. Uh, we have the client. So it's just, we need to receive the, the right data, the right invoices uh, to reclaim them. You actually alluded to uh, the next question, which comes back to the technology platform it's, itself. In terms of uh, I think we're, we're in uh, 20 languages in, in 40 countries. And uh, how scalable is that in terms of, um, will you be expanding into, um, into more languages or is the focus now just to scale up with the, uh, the language infrastructure that you have? So um, 40 countries is, is, this is the ceiling group. So uh, we don't, we don't have uh, more than 40 countries uh, uh, to integrate with because in the world there are 40 countries that are uh, providing a VAT or GST return. So um, I will just cover the countries. Is the European countries, uh, in we have Australia, New Zealand, we have Japan, uh, South Korea, um, uh, Singapore, um, uh, Taiwan, Canada. So, um, these are the those are the countries that are providing. So it's 40, it's 40, it's fixed. Uh, may, most of them are the way uh, where we are connecting them is uh, uh, via uh, API or integration that we have done. So uh, today we are supporting uh, 20 languages. Uh, probably we can support another uh, language or two, but uh, uh, this is going to be more or less the, the numbers in the next few years. Uh, back to the, ca the, uh, the cash flow and the balance sheets. Um, what, what's your general thoughts on when you'll be getting towards cash flow break even, either at a uh, uh, on or on a quarterly basis or on a sustained ongoing basis? You said break even uh, uh, in terms of positive EBITDA. Uh, I'll cash flow break even. Mm. So. Um... In order to support our growth, in order to support our growth, we need to inject uh, more money inside, mainly for the spending card. So, um, uh, and this is uh, the main vehicle for us for the next few years, uh, marketing and sales. And we would like to be a leader uh, in that area. Uh, we should expand more and more dollars around that. Um, uh, therefore, um, we, we can find ourselves uh, in very positive cash uh, if we want to expand our business uh, or expand with new technologies. We decided to expand it because I think this is the, for the benefits of the company, for the investors to be leader uh, uh, in that area. So uh, we need to support the company with uh, more cash in order to support the growth. Um, we, we cannot do that uh, with the cash that we are having now. Uh, if we would like to be like a leader, when I'm saying leader, that means uh, to, come, to come to a, a run rate of um, double digit revenue, I'm saying, you know, 10 or 20 or $30 million just for the spending card, uh, we should invest more around that. 
Um, and therefore, we, we went out to the public market, to uh, ASX, to, to support this growth. So um, this is the exercise here. Uh, and uh, we hope with the technology we are providing, with the footprint in the market, with the uniqueness that we are having uh, in that direction, really can uh, support our growth. And we will find the right uh, uh, partners uh, in Australia and ASX uh, to support it. Uh, we can easily can be a, a, a cash positive. It will say, for instance, we will concentrate on the VAT only, and we will grow by um, uh, 20%, uh, 25%, 50%, or even 100% on yearly basis. This is nice. But what we are looking is to have the growth of four times and five times more. And therefore, we need to look on more vehicles around that. And vehicles around that is a spending card, the smart spending card. In order to achieve that, uh, we have to have more cash to support uh, this growth. We're nearly out of time, ladies and gentlemen. So if you've got any last queries, by all means, put them into the Q&A function here. Um, perhaps two or three more though, Amos, if we can get a few more minutes. Uh, weight about was listed at 20 cents uh, a share and actually went up uh, shortly after listing, but uh, it's significantly down uh, in the meantime. What's your view on, on why uh, the, the shares are, um, are remaining stubbornly low, even with uh, the news that you've been announcing recently? You know, I really don't understand it. You know, um, um, it's the first time that uh, I'm, I'm dealing with ASX and with that market. I have as a CEO an experience with different markets like NASDAQ and others. Um, share went up uh, once we announced it on, uh, I think it was uh, Tristan, correct me if I'm wrong, 170% up in that day. And, oh, and then yeah, last we, week, yeah, to go, yeah did, last uh, week. It was pretty went down. So People are changing hands. I think um, um, time will tell. I think what, what we are doing here, uh, it's a long term, uh, it's something that uh, will put way to that in the front of the fintech industry. I read my lips really in the front of the fintech industry. I think uh, what we are providing, the uniqueness of the technology, uh, the solution no one is having in the market. If we will find the right resources to support our growth, uh, we easily can uh, be one of the leaders uh, in that market uh, with substantial revenue. So this is the idea, substantial revenue. Uh, and, and uh, if we are looking on that, should arrive on the spending card with the VAT that included um, uh, in that uh, in that solution. Uh, if people would like, people are selling and there is not enough buyers, so it goes down. Unfortunately, I really don't understand it. Um, and and um, I hope with the new announcement will come, we show the market that the people sell uh, shares, they, they, they've been wrong and we've been right. And uh, I'm totally believe on, on what we are doing here. Um, and, and uh, I think me and the directors are also ready to put our money where our mouth is. We're in a black period, so we cannot do that. But for sure, we believe on what we are doing here. And, and, and this is a commitment from our side for our investors. Thank you for that. We've got um, one final question. Um, you're much closer to it than most of us uh, on the call at the moment, but with COVID restrictions, easing and this new let's call it COVID operating operation it's a COVID normal operation um, occurring around the world what are you seeing especially in Europe uh, around the new way of doing business uh, the new way of traveling and um, how do you see that that um, ties into the future of way to that you know in the end um, uh, people uh, got used to uh, working remotely and using Zoom on this infrastructure for businesses. Uh, but uh, we see the increase. Uh, I can give you an example of uh, one of our largest client is um, um, budget for uh, traveling uh, was uh, around uh, 200 million per year. When the COVID arrived, it went down to 5 million in one year like that, from 200 to five. And then uh, in 2022, they are about 100 already. So they are in a 50% uh, 
Um, they have 50% uh, of their initial budget they have in 2019. So we see the growth. And when I'm talking with the decision makers there, they're saying, you know, we have a large project, we need to run people from one location to another. Uh, Zoom cannot support us. We should have a meeting face to face. Uh, um, and, and if we can fly over, we prefer uh, flying, we prefer have a face to face meeting. We, it will uh, also will expedite the process of uh, closing deal uh, much more uh, uh, faster. Um, and therefore, we, we see the growth. If they would like to also to have an on site project and they need to move uh, people, for instance, for this company from India to UK to support a big project, doing that remotely, it's almost impossible. They do that, they did it in the past. But now that the people can fly over, uh, they open the gates, so they're flying. And, and the idea in uh, 2023, they will return to initial budget that they had in 2019, $200 million, and probably more than that. So we are seeing the same sentiment in other co co companies. Excellent. Amos, thank you very much for your time. That is uh, all we do have time for this afternoon. Um, apologies to those uh, questions we couldn't get to in this time, but you can always uh, email uh, Adrian Molke if you have a look at any of the announcements on the back. Um, send those emails in. Adrian and uh, Amos will get back to you uh, on those particular queries. But Amos, thanks again for your time. Have a good day to you. Thank and, you, guys. Um, and everybody uh, for attending. I hope you got value out of this and uh, we look forward to talking with you soon. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tristan.